Hey guys, today I thought we would go back and revisit the McFarlane Toys, Movie Maniacs Series 1, Jason Voorhees. The initial review of Jason, I think, was only about two years ago, even though this figure dates back to about 1998. It was actually one of the first figures, and though this isn't the actual original figure that I once owned, it is one of the first figures that I actually purchased uh, back in the day when I got back into action figure collecting. So really, not necessarily Jason here, but actually Movie Maniacs Freddy was the one that got me back into collecting uh, back in the, again, early 2000s, late 90s, early 2000s. Let's get some measurements going for Jason here. Jason stands at almost exactly seven inches tall. Just for those, of course, wondering as well, the display stand, which is now something that we don't see anything of anymore, is give or take roughly eight and a half inches tall. The display stand, again, something that we don't see any anymore with any figure releases, is something that I kind of enjoyed about the original movie Maniacs line. Uh, the later stands, of course, got more smaller and smaller to the point basically where you got this lower half or a variation to the lower half here. And then the cardboard stood very loosely uh, into that little, little display base. But back in the day, you got these full-blown uh, skeletal framed display stands that held the poster relating to the figure inside. Now here we have Jason Goes to Hell the final Friday. It is not really technically, well we'll discuss that in a, in a bit, but it's not really that accurate to Jason Goes to Hell Jason, but nonetheless the movie poster is still one of my personal favorites of the Fred, uh, Friday movies, even though technically this is now under New Line and they didn't use the Friday 13th name. You got the Movie Maniacs down below. And uh, again, the sculpt on this is really nicely done. A couple of little glue dabs basically affixes the poster to the back of the frame. So you get that. Very, very cool. Let's have a look at the Jason. Then we'll kind of look at all the accessories that he comes included with. Yes, he's not really the most accurate representation of Jason Goes to Hell Jason. There are slight... Well, I would say the greater outweighs, you know, the, the more positive aspects of Jason Goes to Hell Jason, I think are there more than him not looking like Jason Goes to Hell Jason. One of the more obvious aspects of Jason Goes to Hell Jason is this bumpy, rigid back brain. I was kind of thought of it as a brain, like basically his mask he's been wearing for so long that the flesh has basically started to grow around it. It doesn't read 100% here. The back certainly does look a lot like Jason Goes to Hell Jason, but the mask is much bigger. It's not as recessed into the, uh, to the actual face as what it necessarily should have been. The straps also not quite 100% to Jason Goes to Hell Jason, but kudos should be given for a late 90s figure the sculpt actually is really good on Jason. Incorporating a couple of different flesh tones. You got some, uh, some kind of warmer flesh tones mixed with some slight pinkish browns incorporated in there. A nice sculpting there on the underside of his mask. And again, there is Jason's mask right there. Does it look like Jason goes to hell, Jason? Not really, no. Uh, they brought in... Well, a lot of the movie maniacs are kind of inspired by. That's the one thing I always looked at them as. So like the mask, for example, may not necessarily read as Jason Goes to Hell Jason. Of course, they're incorporating a lot of the blues and purples in that mask that really isn't resonating 100%. A lot of people aren't 100% crazy that the nose is sticking out as much as it does for this particular mask, as Jason much should have had a much more smoother uh, profile than what he ended up having. Uh, you can see his eyes on the interior of the mask. There's one eye at least. The other eye is not really there. Or if it is there, it's further down. Now, of course, there is uh, the, you know, the myth that there is a face underneath that. And initially, in the review that I did of this guy, I did not actually reveal the mask or take the mask off. Since then, I have removed the mask, and I can tell you that there is a face sculpt underneath that, but you will have to be careful, though. Taking the mask off, it's pegged in. There's actually two pegs, like as if it should have actually come off. 
but unfortunately there's a little bit of glue that they added on at least one or both sides that taking it off does do a little bit of damage. I'll show you what I mean. So again, there's get a good look at it. There's Jason's face or mask thereof. We'll go ahead and take the mask off. And it doesn't actually take any effort at all to remove the mask. But you'll see what I mean. The one side, right there, there's a peg, a very noticeable peg, that pegs in to the side of the head. There's, It's right there. Like, you can easily peg it into place. Unfortunately, though, through maybe just excess paint, uh, I've ripped off the peg. Uh, the peg actually is not there anymore on this side of the of the mask. So unfortunately, I've done a little bit of damage to it. So getting the mask back onto him and staying in place, I have to do a little bit of you know real pushing on there to get it. And if I can line it up, actually, it's a little bit easier. But it's a little bit more difficult to get back into place. Whoa! There's Jason's face. Uh, again, odd, uh, artist's interpretation of what Jason's face would look like. He kind of also reads a little bit more like a werewolf than he does Jason himself. But it is there. It does exist. It was kind of before the days of, well, not, I guess, before the days of internet, but the, the rumblings of, did Jason, was there actually a face underneath this mask? That was what we talked about back in the early 2000s. Was there a face underneath that mask? Well, there is. It's right there. And the mask just goes right over top. Would I ever display Jason like this? Absolutely not. Because he kind of, again, looks like a cross between the toxic, is the toxic Avenger and a werewolf. Just a weird looking Jason. But take it all in. They've slightly lightened the face area as opposed to keeping it the darker color. But I guess you could say if his face is underneath the mask, it's not going to get nearly the same sort of aged coloring or dirt and everything else, blood splattered all over him that the rest of the head would have. So, of course, the face might come across a little bit lighter. We'll, we'll go with that. But once again, to get it back into place, I have to take the one peg and get it, make sure it's actually tabbed in. That's basically what's keeping this mask on Jason now is that one tab. This other side it sits a little loosey-goosey, but the one side stays just enough that it keeps the mask in place. Well, let's have a look at some of the other details going on this guy. Again, this is the part that doesn't really look like Jason Goes to Hell Jason. The colors. The colors, well, for one, for one thing, Jason Goes to Hell Jason. Of all the things that Jason's design had, it was strange that Jason felt the need to tuck his shirt in. Does anybody else think that's a little strange? Jason's massacring counselors, teenagers, anybody he can get his hands on, and yet he takes the time to make sure his shirt is tucked in. This shirt is barely tucked in on the one side, but the coloring as opposed to having it gray, where a head to toe Jason would have been in a gray, gray, gray slacks, gray shirt, Jason here instead almost resonates a little bit more closer to, well, the final chapter Jason, because he's got the blue uh, or the part three Jason, and he's got the kind of brownish silver, kind of brown colored slacks that he has in the movie. Again, some artist's interpretation. He's got a lot of gashes and stuff in him. His, his torso, actually, underneath all of this, looks a lot like Freddy with his chest of souls. And the back, again, you got the big open exposed area where just scarring and uh, just damage has been caused to Jason. Some ripped areas of his fabric. And he's got some rips and stuff going in his pants. The front area of the front part of his leg has, a, again, a lot more of those ripped areas than, uh, than in the back. And you've got some areas where the pant, the shredded pant leg has draped itself over top of the shoes. Looks like he's got himself like a pair of loafers going on there. And there's the back of him. Paint's really good on him if you can suspend some disbelief that he does not look like Jason Goes to Hell Jason. But again, there's some appeal to these older figures. And if you're not counting the NECA stuff and the Ultimate Jasons and, and whatnot, there's some love can be said for these older lines. You know, they, they, they're simpler, yes. They don't 
a hundred percent RK. They don't. I can't even think that seventy five percent of this figure looks like the source material. But again, there's just something appealing about this particular figure. Let's run through his posability, and then we'll get to his accessories. Uh, Jason's head is on a a straight swivel. That's about all you can really do with it. The arms rotate all the way around. That's actually both arms. He has a, a, a kind of a, an angled swivel to his forearms. This one arm, as you can see, is pre-bent. It's pre-posed. It's bent already. The wrist would be able to rotate. This particular wrist, unfortunately, the peg broke over the, the years of just displaying him. So I've actually just put a little bit of glue in there to try to keep it in place. And uh, it's done a pretty good job, but I can't rotate the wrist. But you can rotate the waist. And then he's got a V-cut swivel on the legs. So the legs can rotate in very comical ways if you want to have Jason running. And uh, he has nothing at all in the feet. So pretty pre-posed. But uh, again, there's some love I have to admit for this particular figure. Let's have a look at his accessories. He comes with an axe. Crude, yes, but still gets the point across. Some black blood splattered across the blade portion of the axe. Looks really, really good. Again, for its time period. Comes with a harpoon. I don't know. Comes with a harpoon. And again, some it's got some ropes sculpted around there, painted in black. Not the cleanest of paint applications, but it has the go-to just... This was a, like a lot of the Movie Maniac stuff back in the day. I think there was just a guy that had the paintbrush. He was at the end of the line, dipped it in red, and just basically went like this. His name was Teddy. He just splattered the blood. He was the blood splatter guy. Good old Teddy. Always made Employee of the Month. Did very little, but everybody liked him, and he always brought cake and donuts to, to work. And finally, he comes with a machete. Some weird stitching on the handle portion of it. And favoring more a mirrored chrome kind of deco. It's got little notches in here where I'm sure it has made resistance as it's been pulled out of individuals. Good old Teddy, once again, blood splattering. Doesn't quite match the darker blood here. Here, it's dark blood, but then it's got this really strange light-colored blood as well. No idea. No idea. Displaying him, I'll likely display him if I do get a chance to display him again. And I hope to bring a lot of these figures out. I feel like I'm doing myself a disservice by leaving these things in packaging, or at least in their totes. Displaying him, if I ever was to do it again, I would display him with the machete in his hand. That seems to be the go-to for Jason. That would be the go-to for displaying him as well. Yes, indeed, a fine-looking figure. If you can overlook the fact that he is a little older, he doesn't have as much the bells and whistles as some of the newer figures have. And he doesn't really look as much like the source material as maybe what he could. There is certainly a bit of a love, I have to admit, for this particular figure. That if I was to pass on all my other movie maniacs, I think this particular one I would keep as my all-time favorite. Uh, today we were revisiting. This was the Movie Maniacs Series 1 from McFarlane Toys. This is the Movie Maniacs Series 1, Jason Voorhees. Like what you saw in this video? Hit it with a like. If you haven't subscribed to this video, this channel yet, hit that little subscribe button down below and you won't miss future videos hitting the, uh, the YouTube world. YouTube world. And as well, if you haven't had a chance to go back and look at some of the other movie maniac figure reviews that I've done, would you actually believe that there is a playlist out there for you? I swear, I swear on a removable hockey mask that now I am removing in this video, that there is playlists for older Movie Maniac figures. So check those out, Bunkos and other people, non-Bunkos. Check those out and let me know what you think in those older videos as well. As always, guys, thanks for watching as you always do. I'll see you next time.